Hello friends, this video on biological classification part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us talk about the third group that is euglenoids. Euglenoids. So something which resemble euglena that is euglenoids. So a very simple derivation of the name. Something resemble, resembling euglena is euglenoids. So these share characteristics of both plant and animal. So in some sense, it is similar to plant because they can perform photosynthesis due to the presence of the pigment chlorophyll. So that is why they are similar to plant. So similarity with plant is the process of photosynthesis. And what is the similarity with animal? So what characteristic do they share with animal? They are mobile. Plants are not mobile, right? But animals can move from one place to another. So they are mobile due to the presence of the flagella. Now, the, another thing about the motion of this euglena. During its movement by, with the help of the flagella, the, when it moves during its motion, the shape of the euglena changes. This shape changing motion is known as metabolic. So the shape changing motion of amoeba is termed, uh, I'm sorry, of euglena is termed as metabolic. So this is shape changing motion with the help of flagella. So this type of special movement is shown only by euglena and it is given a term called metabolic. Now when you talk about the structure, they do not have a cell wall, so no cell wall. So you saw in the previous two groups, dinoflagellates and chrysophytes, they had rigid cell walls. So here no cell wall, flexible body due to protein rich layer called pellicle. So the body is quite flexible and due to this flexibility of the body, they give rise to these kind of shape changing motion. That is why when they move with the help of flagella, the entire body keeps moving, the entire body whirls and moves and changes its shape because the body is flexible to change shape. Right? Two flagella present, chlorophyll is present. Now it is said that how did, I mean something interesting which is said about the euglenoids is that uh, the pigment chlorophyll was not present in the euglenoids from the very beginning. They basically acquired chloroplasts by ingesting green algae cells. So they, they, they were eating up green algae. So by taking in too much of green algae, they acquired chloroplasts because green algae contained chloroplasts. And chloroplasts contain chlorophyll. So euglenoids also contain chlorophyll. Now when I talk about habitat, aquatic habitats mostly in stagnant fresh water stagnant means when water d do not run i mean the water gets collected over a place so it is generally seen in those kind of stagnant fresh water uh, stagnant water talking about nutrition obviously they are photosynthetic because they have chlorophyll but they can be photosynthetic only in presence of light because light is needed for photosynthesis. In absence of light, they are heterotrophic. That means they are also capable of feeding on other organisms in absence of light. Now, heterotrophic in what sense? So, when heterotrophic, they can also be parasitic. That is, they can live inside the body of other living organisms. Talking about reproduction, again, mostly asexual reproduction in case of um, euglenoids. Now, when I talk about the heterotrophic nutrition, it can be parasitic. One example could be those which feed on other small organisms which are found in the freshwater bodies. Let us look at the next category that is the slime molds. Slime molds, the word slime comes from the slimy appearance of something. Now, molds are something which fall under the category of fungi. Now, these are not molds, but because of its slimy appearance, they are given the name slime molds. Now, earlier, I mean quite early, people used to think that slime molds should fall under the category of fungi. But then later on observing these uh, organisms more closely, it was found that they do not have the features which are present in fungi. 
For example, if we try to compare them with fungi, so if you keep fungi on one side, the cell walls of fungi are made up of chitin. But if you look at slime molds, their cell walls do not contain chitin. If you look at fungi, they do not move. But if you look at slime molds, they move. So these were some of the basic difference where slime molds proved that they were not fungi. And then they were separately put under this kingdom protista. So these are saprophytic protists. Saprophytic, sapro means rotten. So they feed on dead and decomposed matter. So they are all small nucleate organisms. That means they are size-wise size they are small, they have nucleus. Now their size may vary from very small to considerably larger size. These are fungus-like protists. They are not fungus, but then they have many similarities with fungi. That is why they are called fungus-like protists. So this is how they look like, the slime molds. These are the water molds that they fall under this slime molds category. Structure made up of individual cells that form an aggregate mass. So here you can see the yellow colored structure, right? They are not individual cells. They are group of cells which have, ag which have come together to give the appearance of an aggregate mass. Cell walls are retained even in the mass. So even when all the cells have come together and joined together to form this aggregated mass, their cell walls are still retained. So the individuality is still maintained. Talking about their habitat, they are generally seen in soil, lawns, forest floors. However, they prefer moist, decaying habitats because they feed on dead and decaying matter. So obviously they'll prefer decaying habitats Extremely resistant can survive under adverse conditions. So what do they do during adverse conditions? During the unfavorable conditions, they form cluster of spores. So some spores are formed during the unfavorable conditions and these spores can be germinated to new places to form new organisms. So that is what is asexual reproduction, right? So we will talk about reproduction in the next topic. Before that, let us talk about nutrition. They are heterotrophic because they feed on dead matter. That is why they are saprophytes. Feed on bacteria, yeasts, fungi. Amoeba like food ingestion. So how do they take food? They do take solid food the way amoeba takes in food. You remember, I had explained you how amoeba takes in food. So it engulfs the entire food particle inside its body. So that is how even slime molds take in solid food. Now talking about reproduction, mostly asexual reproduction using spores. As I said, during unfavorable conditions, these slime molds will form spores. Spores are small seed-like structures and then those spores will be carried away to new places either by wind or water or by other animals and wherever it reaches to those new places, those spores will germinate to form the new organisms and the life cycle will keep on continuing the same way. Now these spores are very resistant, that means they can survive for a longer period of time because they have got thick resistant walls because if the spores do not survive for a longer time then it will be difficult right because the spores need to be carried away from one place to another so it has to be resistant to to face those uh, adverse situations so the spores are quite uh, strong so they reach other places and give rise to new organisms Talking about uh, the appearance of slime molds, they can be colored depend depending upon the pigments present inside them. Best examples would be water molds or uh, the plasmodial molds. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.